In this video, we are going to take a look on some of the new changes and updates in Nuclear Tech Mod. These are going to include weapons like the Greg Artillery, the Glass Cannon, Atlas Revolver, etc. Then we are also going to take a look on heat-based machines, mass storage units, and some of the new additions like the Item Boxer and Unboxer for the conveyor belts. Now, as always, you will find the link to download the mod in the description and video chapters are also there. So if you want to skip to a specific section, make sure to use it. Without any further ado, let's get straight into it. First on our list is the Artillery Turret Greg. This turret is based on the factory artillery turret and it takes up a total 4x4 area on the ground. It has a pretty cool 3D model and it has 3 modes. Artillery mode, cannon mode and manual mode. Each mode has its minimum and maximum range. But with a max range of 3000 blocks, this turret has the biggest range out of all the turrets in nuclear attack mode. One interesting change is that when you hover over the ammunition section, the turret will show you every ammunition that it can take. And this applies to every turret in the mod now. So for example, if I place down Jeremy and I hover over the ammunition section, it will show you all 5 different types of ammunition that you can put inside the turret. Alright, so now it's time to test this turret. As I told you, every mod has a minimum and a maximum range. So right now the turret is in the artillery mode. And the artillery mode has a minimum range of 250 meters. But if I switch it to cannon mode which has a minimum range of 32 meters, that villager is toast. And looks like our turret detected something else. Oof, not a good day for duck. So yeah, if you place a target which is inside the grace range that is 32 blocks, the turret will not target it. Now the best part about this turret is the manual mode. And this manual mode will allow you to target anything within 3000 blocks radius. To use it, you will need the long range artillery turret remote. And once you set your target with the designator, the turret will fire its ammo. The animations and the sound of this turret is like the best out of every turret there is. And after a short delay, there we go. So you can call this artillery strike anywhere within 3000 block radius. Next on our list is the Atlas Revolver. Now this revolver can take any .357 round and it has a pretty cool reload animation. But the main feature about this gun is the 3 times damage multiplier for headshots. So if I take a body shot on this iron golem, you can see that we did 42 damage. But if I take a headshot, we dealt total 92 damage. So yeah, this makes it pretty good for close to mid range combat. Alright, next on our list is the chemical thrower. Now the chemical thrower can take any liquid in the mod. Now for example, if I were to fill it up with kerosene, it will turn the chemical thrower into a regular flame thrower. The how chemical thrower is going to act will depend on the liquid that you have inside it. So for example, if I fill it up with sulfuric acid, it is going to deal bonus damage to armors. It is going to deplete armor quickly as acid is pretty corrosive. You can also fill it up with antimatter and also water in order to put out fire. So yeah, the chemical thrower can take any liquid that you want to fill it up with. And yeah, next up we have the chainsaw with a really cool slicing animation. Now the chainsaw will give you multiple items when you kill an enemy or basically an entity as it has the decapitator effect on it. So if I slice through all of these villagers, you will see that the amount of loot that I get is pretty insane. Like you get all different kinds of ammunition. And in order to fill the chainsaw up, once again it's pretty simple like you can place it in a barrel full of kerosene and it will also show you the list of all the different types of fuel that you can place inside it. And finally we have the last weapon which is the glass cannon. Now the glass cannon doesn't consume any ammunition, it only works on energy. So it can shoot anything from radio waves to gamma rays. By right clicking you can change the waves or basically the mode of the gun. So as you see right now I'm going from visible light and if I right click again I will go to ultraviolet light. Now radio waves will deal more damage but they will be pretty slow. But as you keep on going higher the damage will keep on coming down but the speed will go up. 
So gamma rays will fire like a machine gun and radio waves will be kinda like a sniper. Also as the bullets bounce off blocks, it looks pretty cool during the night, as you can see here. And once again in order to charge it up, just place it in any energy storage block or you can stand in front of a charger and that will charge the glass cannon up so there is no need to reload it and it has no durability so it's a pretty cool weapon all right so that was all for the weapon section now we can move ahead to items energy and fluid storage the first big change which used to bug me a lot is the energy data right now you can see that we are charging at a rate of 200 000 he per second and the self-charging battery is going to provide 10 000 he per take which is total to 200,000 HE per second. Before it used to show the energy value for 19 ticks and now it shows the value for 20 ticks. Another cool feature that has been added is now energy blocks and also fluid storage blocks will retain their liquids when they are broken. So right now I have broken all of the barrels and the energy storage block that I had. But if I place them down again, you will see that the barrels and the energy storage block will retain all of the items that they had. So this is pretty cool and yeah, it will prevent any losses due to accidental breakings or clicking. And as the energy values have been fixed, that should also fix the ZPE. And now we are getting 15 HE per tick, which is 300 HE per second. This used to be 14.5 before this update was added. Next, we have three variants of the mass storage units. The first is made with titanium and steel and this is the most basic variant. Next up, we have the dash variant, which is made using seven dash ingots. And finally, the last tier is the titanium, and this can store the max amount of items. Now the mass storage units will be only able to store a single kind of item. So as you can see, the normal one will store 10,000 items of a single type. The dash variant can store 100,000 items of a single type. And finally, we have the titanium, which will store a total of 1 million items in total. So that is it for the mass storage blocks. Next, let's take a look on heat based machines. So the first machine we have is the iron furnace. Now the iron furnace can take any solid fuel that would work in a normal furnace and it will smelt any ore or item that you place inside it. Now when the smelting process is in or basically it is happening, there is a pretty cool animation and smoke particles coming out of the furnace. You can also place a speed modifier and the furnace will speed up pretty quickly. So that's the iron furnace. Next up we have the steel furnace but it cannot be placed normally like the iron furnace. For that you are going to need either the solid firebox or the liquid firebox. And you can place the furnace on top of these fireboxes. Now the solid firebox will work by taking in any solid fuel that you can place in a furnace and that will heat up the steel furnace. Once the furnace has enough temperature or thermal units then it will start smelting the ore. For the fluid burner, you can place any flammable fluid. Here I'm going to take kerosene, which is a pretty high grade fuel. And you will see that it will pretty quickly heat up the entire steel furnace. Now where the steel furnace shines is that it will give you bonus items. So the more items that you have in your output based on that, there or basically you will start receiving bonus items. So as you can see after each operation, or after every four operations, sorry, we are getting one additional piece of ingot. So once the entire process is done, we placed 63 iron ingots, but in return, we got more than 64 plus 14. So yeah, that's that. Now these fireboxes can not only be used to power the furnace, but also Stirling engine, which is a way to produce power. So there is the normal Stirling engine, and then there is the heavy Stirling engine. Now the Stirling engine will work the same way like the furnace is do, all you need to do is place fuel in the firebox and once the heat goes up, the Stirling engine will start rotating. So right now you can see that it is running at 66% of its max RPM or 66% of its efficiency. The amount of power that you will produce will vary based on the fuel that you have placed inside the fuel box. So yeah, and by the way, running this is not exactly safe as if you overload the Stirling engine, the flywheel or the cog, which is the large cogwheel, will actually fly away when it blows up. There we go. 
and this will damage any entity and blocks which come in its way. Now you can once again pick this cogwheel up and place it back in the engine. So it is not technically wasted when it blows up. You can use the stalling engine again. And as I told you before, any entity which come we are basically which it comes in the way is going to get destroyed. There. A quick smoothie recipe. Same goes for the heavy sterling engine. If you overspeed it, the cogwheel is going to fly away. So be careful while using the sterling engines. Now finally we come to conveyor belts. The conveyor belts can now turn in more better ways basically. So you can split a corner conveyor belt and you can also rotate it by right clicking with the screwdriver. In order to turn it, you can use shift right click. Next item is the conveyor sorter. The idea here is that you can whitelist or blacklist any item. There are total six colors on each side of the sorter or the router and you can route items based on the whitelist or the blacklist that you have provided here. And final item is going to be the conveyor boxer and the conveyor unboxer. Now the conveyor boxer will take four, eight or 16 stack of items and convert it into boxes. And the conveyor unboxer will take all of the boxes and unbox them back into items so that it can go back into the crate. It is done so that there are less items traveling on the conveyor belt so that there is less lag. So as right now I have set the conveyor boxer to 4 stacks. As soon as 4 stack of wool go inside it, it will be converted into a single box. So right now instead of having 8 stacks of wool on the conveyor belt, we only have 2 boxes which are traveling which means less lag, less rendering time. And as soon as the boxes go inside the unboxer, they will be sorted back into their respective item forms. And the cycle will continue and yeah. So that's it for the conveyor boxers and the conveyor unboxers. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, do smash that like button, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Let me know what you guys would like to see next Friday. Peace out.